So, yesterday I did my videos on the coverage of AMD's new products, and um, the way I do my videos is I go and I look at all of the reviews, and I go and see them, and I kind of amalgamate all the results, and I do do charts and stuff like that, but I'm never going to be somebody who shows you charts and, you know, bores you with all that kind of stuff. I'm just a person who likes to shout at a camera in a shed. That's who I am, and I understand that some people don't like that content, and that's fine. For, for you, there's other people out there. There's people who are cooler and calmer about the way they review their products and the way they talk about things, but what I do do, I think, better than anybody else is try and be as honest as possible uh, sometimes i get it wrong sometimes i give you my opinion and it's wrong sometimes i give you i i state things that i think are fact and they're in fact not fact and sometimes i'm absolutely dead on uh you know so this video i suppose is about talking about the way i'm going to review things going forward the way i'm going to conduct myself going forward the things i'm going to try and change and the things that i will never change and if you don't like that then you should go somewhere else and that's honest to god that's the type of person i am i'm i'm like i'm like marmite i i'm a person who you either love or you hate and that's fine i i get that that's who i am i i tell you my opinion i never lie i try not to lie in fact like sometimes you know, well, I never lie with, like, you know, unless I think that I'm telling the truth, but then it turns out that I'm not telling the truth. I will always give you my honest opinion and the way that I try and conduct myself. I have a vast array of knowledge when it comes to compu computer hardware because I've built and sold PCs for years. Uh, I have, uh, I have, um, I'm formally educated as a computer engineer with some ne some networking in the background. So that's that's my my I suppose my my qualifications. But not only that, I've been fixing computers since I was twelve. So you know, I go back to originally having a, C a Cyrix processor like on a Packard Bell PC. That's how far back I go, nineteen ninety eight, and. You know, for me, what's always fascinated me is GPU architecture. So when I see, when I release videos of talking about Navi and, and, and uh, you know, touring and stuff like that, I'm passionate about that. And I want to know how it works and I want to know how, how they, 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 they compare to each other. And when I get upset about Navi, I got upset about Navi because I was hoping it would be cheaper. And that was the truth. But I wasn't expecting to be as fast as it is. So I need to, t sometimes I need to come back and reflect on what I think. And, and sometimes... You need to sit there and go, do you know what, Paul, this is actually a great launch because they've given you more performance than you thought you would get. Granted, it's a little it's a little bit more expensive than, and if it was at the original price, it was way too expensive in my opinion. But what you've gotten from AMD is a 70 card that, like a 70 class performance, this generation 70 class performance, but it hasn't come from NVIDIA, it's come from AMD. Uh, you know, NVIDIA are still offering you that level of performance pretty much, but they're offering it for 500 quid. Whereas AMD are giving you that performance and at that, that price as well. You know, 350 to 400 quid has traditionally been the 70 class card's price performance. And the 70 class has traditionally performed around the, 10, the, the previous generation's 80 class card. And Navi does that. And Navi does that at a price that is tr traditionally around the, the 70 class cards. So why am I upset? I shouldn't be upset. And you, you come away from these things and you think about it for a while. And maybe I should actually give it a day or two to think about it. Because genuinely, I think when my, my rants, well, a lot of you think they're funny and hilarious and you like to sit there and laugh at an Irish guy losing the plot. Sometimes I'm not as concise and coherent as I want to be in those videos. So I don't say, don't touch on all the points. And sometimes it comes off a bit wrong. My general overview on Navi is that it is a fantastic architecture fucked up by the AMD marketing team again. Not AMD marketing team. Well, suppose AMD marketing team and the actual people who decide to launch these products. They shouldn't have been launched the way it launched. And that's the problem. AMD are the worst enemy. You know what I mean? But then also you got to look at the tech press. And a lot of the tech press are fair. And a lot of the tech press are good and do very good work. And they do better work than I will ever do in, in terms of the amount of benchmarking and the amount of, uh, you know, time they spend ironing out their benchmarks and, and being methodical with their the way they benchmark things. And you got to give them a lot of credit for that. But there are a lot of them out there who are taking backhanders. And they are. That's happening. And they're, they're, they they should have a disclaimer on all of their channels saying they are influencers, not not um not reviewers because you can't review a product if you're in the back pocket of somebody else and my i think my goal in the future my goal of this channel has always been to tell you not to waste your money on shit you don't need but i think i'm going to have to extend that remit over to telling you not to watch certain specific reviewers or not 
to believe certain reviewers but i'm never going to name and shame people i don't think that's my my job but what i will try and do and i've done it in a few other videos of things that you should watch out for so things you should see in a review that should like trigger you to the point where you you like trigger something in your mind that says okay this guy's a bit fishy and i think that's that's what i'm, I'm gonna do re navi i have one it's ordered it's coming on wednesday but we know how amazon get with their deliveries uh, i didn't buy it on amazon but it's a great thing where you can you can buy it on another retail and use amazon to pay it and to ship it and it just comes with an amazon box but technically it came from the other retailer so that's what i've done i bought it from a retailer in the uk my total uh, price of buying it was actually very good it was 419 uh, euro which and that's delivered to the door which is actually very good considering i paid nearly 800 for radeon 7 and um, by the time i got it shipped and all that kind of stuff uh, you have to like you have the way it works in ireland just pay more so the fact that because we've got 23 percent tax so I'm, I'm delighted that i got it a little bit cheaper than i was think expecting it to be so like if it had been 450 it would have probably been more close to 500 for me but the fact that it's 400 now it enabled me to get it for 419 which is which is decent so um i will be t selling my radeon 7 i see no point in anybody with a radeon 7 keeping it unless they need that extra vram unless they need it they use it for productivity work uh, there's no need if you're just gaming with a radeon 7 yeah, yeah it's silly you know i think every what what navi has done is is eliminated every single card above the 400 quid quid part every card above 400 quid is made silly because it, it's price to performance is so good that it just makes every other card stupid and it 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 plays so well that you can actually go up to 4k on it and it's it's you know i i, I genuinely when i get it in my hands i'll be able to speak on this a bit more and i'll be able to look at the reviews more uh you know subjectively and um you know uh you know and be more objective about the whole thing as well because uh you know I, I, everything i give you is just my my subjective opinion uh but when you when you've got it in in house and you you have the physical object you can see it and you know what it does and you can look at other people's numbers and you can go that's horseshit and i did that with vega and i did that with radeon 7 and what you can very clearly see from the tech press is is numbers that don't match mine and i'm using a cpu that should make those numbers lower and my numbers are better and that's funny to me that's like that was the, f the first time i got a vega 56 and i put it in my shit my machine and i started getting into this stuff and i started making a, a youtube channel and i put a vega 56 in and i was blown away by the numbers i was getting compared to what reviewers gave them i was like this shit's real there are people out there who are genuinely reviewing products and not giving them a fair shout and i couldn't believe it I, I, you know, you, you lot, you want to believe that all this shit is real. Very much like, you, you know, you want to believe that your politicians are cleverer than you are. And you want to think that these politicians are clever people and are not going to make stupid mistakes. But as you get older, you very, very, very quickly realize that they're just people like you are. And they're about as intelligent as you are. And they're, they're capable and they're certainly fallible and they can make mistakes. And that's genuinely what you see with the tech press sometimes. But there are people out there who I will rave about, like Steve from Hardware and Box. Man, this, the amount of work that guy puts in to do his reviews. Gamers Nexus, fantastic, wonderful outlet. Although, I think he kind of missed a point a bit with with uh, with Navi. Um, yeah, it's hot and it's loud, but it's also a hundred quid cheaper. So, you know, uh, that while I, and I think the drivers needed to be sorted out at launch. They needed, they need AMD need to sort that out. And I agree with those points, but. Uh, it's fucking 100 quid cheaper like and it's it's pretty much the same performance as a 2070 super it's it's a little bit slower but for the price it's well worth it and that's my opinion on it um you know it, it's so cheaper that it makes it look stupid and there will be a partner cards and hopefully they'll hit the 400 quid mark and if they hit the 400 quid mark well then they're a decent buy if they hit the 450 quid mark they're probably starting to look a bit silly and if they get up to the 500 quid mark well then just buy an rtx 2070 super because that already has a good cooler but that's the way that's going and when i did my videos yesterday uh, i'll never take them down i'll never retract anything i say i said it and i'll stand by it and i'll say okay i did say that and if i got something wrong i'll admit i got something wrong and what i got wrong with navi was i got wrong the performance i genuinely thought it'd be slower uh, i am blown away and that is fundamentally my my i suppose my apology to you guys is telling you that navi's bad and it's not <laughs> uh 
I suppose in my video yesterday, I, I clearly said all of these things. And I said that you shouldn't buy a Radeon 7 anymore. And I said that you shouldn't buy like a, a 20, 2080 or a 2076. You should buy this card. Like this card is, is very good. I would wait for AIB partner cards, but like this card is very, very good. And uh, I, I said I'm annoyed, but that the, the RX 5700 is a little bit slower. Uh, uh, sorry, a little bit slower. And it's for me, that card needs to be 100 quid cheaper. That, that card genuinely needs a price cut. That card does. Because they've locked it down so that you can't get any more performance out of it. And done that because they know that that card overclocked would come close to a, a 5700 XT. So if you're going to do that, you need to charge less for it. I'm sorry. It's okay if you're going to charge less for it. But if you're going to artificially lock the core, well then, for me, I really don't think it should cost what it costs. And, you know, you can argue all you want. It's about Vega 50. It's about Vega 64 level performance, give or take. And you can get Vega 64s for 300 quid on the used market now, and you can get them for 350 quid brand new. And, like, you know, it, it doesn't offer anything else other than a little bit better, well, much better power efficiency. But it doesn't, like, it, it, it's not world shattering. Whereas the RX 5700 XT performs in a tier, price tier, and a performance level that we haven't had. Do you know what I mean? It's somewhere between, uh, you know, a Vega, a, oh, sorry, a Vega 64 liquid cooled edition and like uh, a Radeon 7 in performance, but yet it's cheaper than all of the above. And that's crazy. It's crazy that it's it's closer to a 1080 Ti than it is to a Vega card. And that's just mind blowing to me. Uh, regardless, regarding the, the, the Ryzen CPUs, there is no point, no point in buying Intel products. And I think I very clearly made that point in my video, but there are some reviewers out there still saying for gaming buy a 9900k and those reviewers are the same people who said buy a 7700k and if you're somebody who owns a 7700k now i'm sure you're delighted with your gaming performance but i'm sure you're looking at like the the coffee lake stuff and the 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 you know the 9900k and the 9700k and you're like going why did i buy this i got ripped off and that's the fundamental like those those that it, the fact that Intel were still selling four quad cores when AMD launched Ryzen and it was an A-core part and there was people recommending a quad core over an A-core part, forget, that's fucking crazy. And the fact that now, like, the gap is closing to, to the point where A-core parts now make sense for gaming and you should probably have A-core parts in certain modern titles and the, the multi-threaded performance is getting better and better and better makes sense for those parts. Like, you should have one of those. Do you know, A core parts are good now, and to say to just get, go and make the same same wide wide sweeping statement that's always that that used to be true is not true anymore. Is that all you need for gaming is a quad core? Yeah, that was true, but it's not anymore. And it very quickly became not the case when when Intel began to launch more cores and AMD began to launch more cores. And it's only going to continue off into the future. AMD are not finished giving you more cores. You're going to get more cores forever from AMD. AMD won't stagnate like Intel did. AMD won't stop giving you more cores. Now, they damn well will start charging you more for money for it if Intel don't compete. But the only way Intel can compete is by giving you more cores. So it's a cores race now. That's what it is. So everything's going to have to change in the way that CPU, uh, that, that software developers develop games to run on, on these chips. Because the only way you're going to get more performance is not by clock speed and not by IPC. It's going to be down to giving you more cores. That's the war we're in now. It's a core war. And for me, uh, you know, quad cores and quad cores are just cabbage catchers now. That's what they are. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a cabbage, you buy you buy a quad core. If you're if you're a cabbage, you buy you buy cores without any hyper threading because new consoles are going to have hyper threading. So, you know, why why are you buying them? You're cabbage. Like, cop on. The ninety six hundred K is stupid now. The ninety four hundred F or whatever is stupid now. The, the 8700K is still decent performance-wise, but it's stupid at the price it is because AMD are offering something that performs very similar to it for 200 quid. And that's that's the fundamental line you need to take here. And I'm sorry if you're bored and I'm sorry if you bought an Intel processor and you feel robbed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're going to defend it to your death, but that's the, that's the fundamental issue here. That's where we are now. That's what, like, AMD have brought you to a point now where a 200 quid car cpu beats your 350 quid cpu this is the way it used to be every new cpu generation it would make the old cpu generation look stupid and you have to buy a new one and even if you're even if you're arguing oh well well you know blah blah blah, blah until i have these well like 
what you're looking at now is the fact that there's still 2600 there's still 2600 x's out there and 2600s and they're dropping in price the fact that you can go out and buy a 1600 for like you know what you used to pay for a 2200 g money that you can buy a 16 car part for 2200 g money now that's what you can buy <laughs> this is crazy this is amazing if you want like people people quit very quickly forget the old six six cores but they're out there now they're out there for cheap prices and you can get them b350 boards for like 60 quid now so you can get a board and a cpu and maybe some ram for less than 200 fucking quid that's a gaming platform that's a six core 12 threaded gaming platform for like less than 200 quid that's insane and this is this is the world we live in well not less a little slightly more than 200 quid but that's the world we live in now and this is great and intel didn't push that intel didn't make that happen if it was up to Intel, you'd still be getting quad cores, right? We, you'd still be getting quad cores at the 350 mark. You'd probably be getting all these other cores, but they'd be just way more expensive. And that's the that's the world that Intel wanted you to live in. AMD said, no, thank you. Fuck you all. I'm bringing you all of these cores. And that's that's the world we're going to compete, continue to live in. And uh, I am trying to get those parts. I just don't have enough money at the moment. My, my choice is to either go out and buy a, 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 a six core part and do a review on that or actually go and buy a decent part so that's like like not the the six core parts amazing i mean to buy a, a a higher end part so that i can kind of cover all of the angles do you know what i mean so I'm, I'm aiming for a 12 core part but they are very expensive so i probably just end up getting an eight core part and um, patreon money's really helped i'm up to about 150 quid so uh that's really helped but i still will have to cover with some of my own cash and i will want to get a new motherboard as well because the only motherboard i have is an x370 motherboard so um actually i think i have a b that's only a yeah it's a b350 board as well i have here but like i don't really have you know as many motherboards as i had about a month ago i should have foreseen this and not sold as many computers but i sold some computers so i don't have the boards that i would i had a b450 and an x470 motherboard and i got rid of them i should have kept them but i got rid of them so that's the scenario i'm in so i, I will have to buy it uh i won't have to buy ram luckily i have ram here but i won't i will have to buy a motherboard and i will have to buy a cpu and i won't have to buy a cooler because i have a 240 millimeter ao and i have a 340 millimeter ao so i have cooling sorted and everything like that so where it comes on that is um i will try and do an, a review on that as well and i'll it, 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 for me it's not a review it's a bullshit catcher right that's what i'm going to try and do from now on i'm going to try and do bullshit catchers so you wouldn't look at me like a reviewer i want you to look at me like a bullshit catcher so in other words a fucking fact checker i'm going to look at those reviews and i'm going to say well this is what i got and i'm going to be very as open and, tr and transparent as i can do as little benchmarking as possible just pick whatever i find suspicious and hit that nail on the head and say well that's a bit weird that's a bit strange why did you get this what was that for what because i just genuinely think that there are people out there trying to bury amd and in, in in the gpu side and in the in the cpu side and i i'm just sick of it i genuinely am and you can call me an amd fanboy all you want but amd are the only one driving value here amd are the only one bringing you know on gamer side here everyone else just wants to rob you so for me uh like and, and let's be honest amd tried to rob you at navi they did try and rob you at navi they did not drop the price of navi uh because uh they debated you as uh what's his name fucking i can't remember i can never remember the guy's name when it comes to making a video uh but they didn't debate you they were 100 percent gonna launch navi at 500 450 and 389 that's what they're going to launch at uh, 379 that's what they're going to launch navia and they just stuck that uh you know super's performance and went yeah well the 5700 is uh, kind of getting beaten by this or you know coming close we need to drop the price on that and it's getting big so we need to drop the that's what happened they know they won't sell if they're close in performance but you know and close in price they need to be they need to have that buffer so the, the reason why they dropped it is because they were they were caught off guard by super's performance i think they probably seen a little few more cus and probably said well we'll match them in performance but that's what happened you know they uh, they the performance is there on the super cards as, as re a performance increase i think that the super cards though in relation to their performance i think are absolutely crap <laughs> and i'll explain myself right the the not so much with the 2070 super because what you're doing what you're getting there is like you're getting a, a t104 die 
it's a proper 70 class card it should still cost 400 quid right let's be honest on there that's what you're getting with that but it's better the 2060 super all they've done is launch all they've done is release a better yielding 2060 a 2070 the original 2070 die all they've done is get it got a better yielding piece so in other words a cheaper to manufacture 2070 that performs relatively similar to the original 2070 but it costs way less to manufacture and they've given you that and everybody's heralding them for a price drop nah it costs less money to make they're making more margin on it that's what that's what's happened there or they're making the same margin but they've dropped prices so they know they'll sell more that's what's happened there and nobody can see that and, and that's that's where i'm trying to be a bullshit catcher right so like that's bullshit that 20 the 2060 is bullshit 2060 super is bullshit it's 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 a very fast card but it's not as fast as the uh rx 5700 xt and it's the same price so that card needs to come down in price they nvidia in, in fitness to to where they need to be i think they need to drop the, the the 2060 super to 350 quid and they need to drop the 2060 to 300 quid that's where they need that's where they need to be in my opinion and and i honestly think that the rx 5700 xt uh the rx 5700 sorry should be 300 quid as well and maybe it will get there um i think there's there's a, there's a price war coming i think that now now i finally I've, i take back everything i said about them being in cahoots with each other right genuinely i take back everything i've said about that i was wrong about that as well i shouldn't have said that I said it in anger and temper and I shouldn't have and a lot of times I say things in anger and temper and I shouldn't have and this video the whole I the whole point this video is to kind of level what I think and what I think with that card is that fundamentally they're not in because like they're, they're competing with each other, dropping prices like do you know what I mean and and, and what's going to happen is Nvidia are going to drop their prices and AMD are going to have to drop their prices again it's great it's wonderful it's amazing and the only person who wins the only people who win are me and you and this is why com competition is great and that's what I love to see is competition and this this architecture Navi's architecture is going to scale up and I will do a video on that and how well this is going to scale up but it's going to scale up mantle good like absolute crazy good my concern is power draw and I've said that from the start my concern is the 225 watt TD but the weird one is they've actually hit the total board power this time it hits it. It doesn't go over it. It's like 218 watts. It's mad. Before, it was like 225 watt TDP. And it was like, oh yeah, 300 watts. Do you know what I mean? But now it's 225 watts. So, yeah, that's good. And I like that. Uh, but, um, yeah, re-CPUs. I'm trying to get one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and catch as much bullshit as I can. Um, I won't name names because I don't think that's fair. Uh, I, I will give you the weapons to go and spot the bullshit yourself, though and yeah just ultimately that's what this video is all about it's all about talking about what i'm what i'm going to try and do in the future uh what i hope to do and how i hope to try and enlighten you a little bit because i sit here and i watch these reviews and i look at what's coming out and i look at what their people are saying and um it's very obvious to me what's going on and it's very easy like i was looking at some of these numbers with the radeon 7 and either they wouldn't like like they were running Wolfenstein, the new Colossus or whatever, and their numbers were with a with a ninety nine hundred K. Their numbers were a hundred and thirty frames per second. With a right down seven, and I was like, "What? Like, my, I have a video. Go go watch any of my other videos, any of my reviews of right down seven. I'm very clearly getting with Vegas, Vegas sixty four and fifty six. Those kind of numbers. Like my right down seven is doing the hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy frames per second on a twenty nine fifty X. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's bullshit. Like that's an either a mistake or you're doing it on purpose. And I don't know what you know. What I mean, exact same settings. I looked at the exact same settings. I, you know, you know, uh, I can't remember the name of the setting. And it's like mine something or, or Uber something or, or I can't remember. What it it's like it's in German, whatever. And I, I had ever all of my settings on maximum. And I even to the point where I was looking at other people's numbers, going. Um, have I missed something here? So I triple and quadruple and, you know, checked my settings and my settings were exactly the same as theirs and mine were up at 100, uh, sometimes, at some points in the game, 190 frames per second. The average was about 150 or 160. I can't remember at the time. But, like, it's a good 30 frames difference. And you're like, what are these people doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're looking at people's fire strike scores for Vega initially. And, uh, like... 
their Vega 64 number is the same as my Vega, Vega, Vega 56 number. Their Vega, uh, you know, like, my numbers are just a good 20% faster than theirs in some cases. I'm like, am I losing my mind here? What's going on? But in the future, I'm going to try and show, I'm going to try and show more of that stuff because I just think it's not fair. And I, I genuinely think that, that it, some reviewers have given Navi a bad time. Um, and I've bought one. And it's on the way, and I'll try and sort that out. Sort that out. The AM4 stuff, the new Ryzen 3000 series stuff, will probably come a bit later because I'll probably have to sell my Radeon 7 to kind of offset the price of that. So it will take a while, and then I won't have a really high-end GPU except for the 5700 XT to use as the, as the kind of GPU benchmarking. But yeah. It's not really what I'm into anyway. I'm just gonna try and overclock the balls out of it and see what you know, see what benchmark scores I get. That's what I do. I benchmark score and I, I just try and see what people got and try and correct them. Anyway, I'll talk to you in the next one. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but if you disliked it, tell me why I disliked it because I can't fix it. If I don't know what I did wrong and in the comments, let me know what you think about me and my the way I think I'm gonna try and move forward with the channel. I think that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you my opinion like I always do, I'm gonna try and bring out a daily video about what's new in tech tech and where where i think things are going to go trying to bring out videos about um you know uh basically me me talking about innovation and the way things are going to go what i think is going to happen and then just generally calling people on their shit <laughs> and if you like that tell me you like it if you don't tell me you don't like it and i'll talk to you the next one lads i'm gonna press this button stop recording don't forget to like comment share and subscribe uh yeah and sharing is the most important thing i'll talk to you the next one bye 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 bye, bye.